Welcome to Bethel Funerals. Whether you're joining us as a new board member or a new staff member, we'd like to share with you something about the history of Bethel. Because we believe that understanding where we have come from helps us understand where we're going. So please sit back and enjoy something of the story of how God has brought Bethel to where it is today. The story of Bethel Funerals is really a wonderful story, a walk of faith that God led us into. And uh, we'd like to walk you through that today and give you some feel for how God put it together and where it's going and something of the vision that lies before us. Back in 1973, we were thinking here that uh, we needed to find a way to help people who wanted to support Wycliffe, but they wanted to support us with some kind of taxation break. Well, we couldn't do that. Uh, we wished we were like America and Canada and some of these other places, but we couldn't do that. But there was the thought that we could start a, an organization, an investment organization, whereby people could give money to us and we would in turn invest that and uh, with the interest, we could then pass that on to the members that, uh, or, or the project that the people, the donors, would like to help. And so Word Investment Limited was incorporated and we started and we invited people to give uh, to this fund. And uh, over a period of time, we had over $2 million that had come in uh, to be invested. And so it was very exciting to see this kind of interest, but also it was blessing them. So that was the rationale uh, uh, to get started. And the group of men that came uh, to start the organisation also then became the investment committee. So we used to have a fairly regular meeting of the investment committee just to look at where we could maximise our return on every dollar we had invested. So we were exploring different avenues and we decided that we would have a look at the housing market and we did build a couple of houses, one in Geelong and one in Wollongong, but it was a tough market and would you believe it, we just finished the house in Geelong and, and Ford put off a large number of workers and the housing market collapsed. By the grace of our Heavenly Father we were able to sell the house and we got out of it. But we realised the housing market was a fairly difficult market to be in. So then we looked at a couple of other things. We looked at a, a goat farming project and we had a bit of a dabble in that. We also got involved with a hiring business and it was quite a successful business but a fairly small one and we realised it was never going to be a, uh, a mind blower in terms of return on funds. So then we started to think about was there some other way that we could not only have a business but have a ministry? And um, the idea came up of a Christian funeral business. I can remember one of the directors saying, well, we've got no capital, we've got no hearse, no office, no mortuary, haven't got anything and no staff, where do we go from here? And then I remember our brother David saying, well, as a matter of fact, there might be some capital available. One of the investors wanted to reinvest some money, and it was one John Chapman, the late John Chapman. And uh, so there was $180,000 available at this particular time. We didn't want to go ahead and use $180,000 on a scheme that uh, might not go very far. We were very concerned that we do it the right way. And so uh, when I went across to see John about this money, he said, yes, he said, uh, I, I would be delighted. If you feel this is of God, then go ahead. And so we developed over a period of some weeks, might have been some months, this philosophy statement, which in large part is exactly today where it was then. I think that the original philosophy statement we came up with was a very good uh, premise for, it to work, for us to work from. As we did this, uh, we realised that uh, we, sitting around the table, knew nothing about a funeral business. But in God's kindness, uh, Ruth had come from uh, a church up in Kerrang, where the Adams family had had a funeral business for 120 years. Having been in the funeral industry all my adult life 
and our family at that time around 120 years in the funeral industry. Being from a, a missionary-minded church and also at the same time having an uh, association with Wycliffe and we were supporting Wycliffe missionaries, it was going around in my head, unbeknown to all this other that was going on, you know, why don't we I start somehow a Christian funeral business down in Melbourne? And uh, I could use my expertise to help get it set up and also at the same time the money to go to missions. I rang uh, uh, through to my friend Trevor and uh, said that I would like to talk to him. And he said, well, he said, I'm sorry, I'm just going to Adelaide. In God's amazing timing, I had just bought a, a ticket to Adelaide. I was going there. So uh, I said, we'll meet over there. So I said, right, well, we'll meet at Pizza Hut. And uh, I thought, well, it's a good way, you know, money and food usually goes together. So, uh, and I think David was paying, so that was fine. <laughs> and so we went, we met there. And David said to me, uh, got a bit of a proposition for you. And I just said without him saying anything else, so you want to start a funeral business in Melbourne? Because that's just the, how I felt the things needed to go. He was taken aback a bit by like that, that I'd stolen his thunder. <laughs> and anyway, so be it. I explained to him that at that particular time was a good time to start thinking about, you know, starting a Christian funeral uh, business. Now, from a number, a number of reasons, one is it that the next number of years we were going to have the greatest number of retirees, you know, the baby boomers after the war and, and that type of thing. So the next 20, 25 years was going to be the peak in the funeral industry with people uh, passing away. And so you needed to get in on the ground floor, uh, so to speak. <laughs> and, uh, and so uh, I said that would be an, a good reason why we should start up. Secondly, it was ironical that around about that time, uh, a couple of big American organisations had made uh, acquisitions of a lot of uh, companies here in Melbourne and they were sort of starting to set the scene as far as um, the funeral business was concerned and they were tending to do it from an American uh, point of view, which didn't always correlate with perhaps the way Australians saw uh, the funeral, their funerals to happen. And so there was a little bit of a, a reaction from the general public about uh, these organisations uh, taking it over. So I said from that point of view, there, that's another reason why uh, we should be thinking about doing it. It's a good time, it's the right time. We've got, <coughs> we've got those of our competitors that are, that are a little bit offside with, uh, with uh, people in Melbourne and uh, we've got the people that are dying. So what hinders us? It's uh, always interesting when uh, staff come on board uh, new staff uh, because they can find an organisation that's up and running and uh, things are done in a certain way and people don't always quite understand why we do things or what the heartbeat is that led us to that. So I think it's very helpful to understand something of the history that brought us to this place, some of the ways that God led us into coming to uh, the ways we do it and the principles that, that we, uh, we uh, maintain. So we decided that, yeah, we wanted to start a Christian funeral business with three main objectives, uh, money and ministry and missions. And that's what the grounds we started in. We wanted to minister to people in their time of need. We wanted to make money to support missionaries and we wanted to see the mission organisations build up and to be able to serve the way they'd been doing so much in the years before. Because of the situation that... Uh Trevor has just reminded us of the, the uh, American companies that were coming in and some of the things that were being done were causing a lot of questions in people's mind as to uh, the funeral industry. And so we thought the name Integrity was just a wonderful name. <laughs> but uh, when the ad hoc committee said, well, the first thing we ought to do now is just go ahead and incorporate so that we can uh, now formalise our work and get started, to our surprise, when we went along to actually set the name, it was already there. One of the companies in the city here had heard of uh, Integrity Funerals and what we were hoping to do, and so they'd quickly gone along and they had incorporated the name. Now they had to uh, 
keep paying for that name because it runs out after a time, but the, so we waited patiently and then we checked and they had paid again. So we thought we've got to find another name. So we sat around the table. Can you imagine how hard it is to find a name for a Christian funeral business? I mean, it's not easy. I mean, we tried several names and I would ring up Trevor and I'd say, well, Sincerity. That, that's, that's, that's a good name, Sincerity Funerals. Uh, we we you know, thought that would be very nice. And he said, no, that's no good. Why is that no good? Well, because there's already a simplicity in the phone book. And when people look up, they'll get to simplicity and think, that's it. You see, N comes after M. This was his wonderful uh, uh, theory. And so several, several of these names we tried, and we didn't get very far. I suggested Lazarus, but... Uh, <laughs> They, they didn't come at that. <laughs> so remember the night we were sitting around the table and we're thinking, well, we need a staff member. And it was so almost by magnetic, all of our heads turned to Rod and said, Rod, you ought to do this. And Rod said, oh, he said, I know nothing about this. He said, the only funeral I know about is it was my father's funeral. But he said, uh, well, we said, why don't you go up and spend some time with Trevor up in Kerrang? and uh, just have a look at the business firsthand. So he agreed, and we were amazed that he did it just as easily as that. And uh, he went up there to uh, Trevor's uh, place, and uh, Trevor would have probably three funerals a week, but that week they had seven. <laughs> and so it was a real introduction, and he came home and said, I think I could do that. And he said, well, he said, if the bank will give me redundancy, he said, I will, I will step aside. So he asked if he could possibly get uh, his money, and they said, no, we're not doing that anymore. And he said to us, well, he said, I don't think we can, I can go. But then one day he was called upstairs, and they said, we've decided to give you your payout. And he said, I knew at that moment that God wanted me in it. And he rang me that day and said, uh, I'm available. And it was that night that Doug Carr rang. So in one day, two people had been presented. We were asking God all along, would he please manifest himself in ways that we knew that this was of God? And we saw it time and time again. We needed an office, of course, to get started. We heard that Youth for Christ had moved out of the uh, Uniting Church in North Blackburn there. And so we went along. Uh, Rod, who was now... Uh, on the staff and we sat with the minister who we'd never met, we just went off the street and as we were talking, I was dreading the moment that he would say, what kind of a Christian business is it that you want to have in our church building? And it finally came out, what <laughs> was the business? And I said, well, actually we were thinking of a Christian funeral business. And uh, he uh, very quickly told us that he didn't think any Christians would be interested in doing such a business uh, as that. And then he said this, he said, you know, it's amazing that you've come to me. He said, you know, I used to work for a funeral director, <laughs> firstly. Secondly, he said, I've been in court with three families this year who have been taken to court by funeral businesses because they haven't been able to pay. And he said, if you will do it right, he said, I'll be right behind you. <laughs> but he said, of course, we've got to go to the church council and to see how uh, that will fare. So we went along and uh, to meet the council. The uh, lady who was chairing the meeting uh, let me know right before the meeting started that uh, she was not interested in having anything to do with a funeral business in the church, and she was chairing the meeting. Uh, we had little to tell apart from the fact that God had led us to this point, and so they said, tell us about what you're up to. So we just told how we saw the vision, and uh, they listened, and at the end they said, we can do that. Uh, the lady came to me after and she said, you know, I really believe that this is the right thing to do. And uh, the astounding thing was she became our first secretary. <laughs> <laughs> so here we were without a name and wondering, and I had to go uh, with Rod one day back to see uh, Keith uh, Whitford, the, the pastor. And uh, as we were talking, he started talking about Bethel funerals and after a while Bethel funerals and after a while Bethel funerals. And I thought, that's strange. Rod didn't tell me that he'd got a name. And uh, so after it was all over, I went out and I said, Rod, 
where did you get that name from? He said, I didn't get that name. I thought you got that name. <laughs> I said, no, uh, where did it come from? So we went back in and said, Keith, where did you get that name Bethel from? He said, well, he said, when I was a kid and they didn't give me the, a name for something, I always named it. You guys don't know what it is, so I just gave it a name. <laughs> and I said, do you mind if we use it? He said, it's yours. The house, <laughs> the house of God. Isn't that beautiful? And it's right in the front of the phone book. <laughs> <laughs> and so we were blessed in so many, many ways. We, we've been really blessed in that. So now we had the, we had the office. But we still needed, of course, to have a hearse and we needed to have staff and uh, we needed to have a mortuary. Those were three very, very significant things that we needed. As we sat around discussing these things, it was quite interesting because we said, you know, uh, we were just unified in this. We said, we don't want a black hearse and we don't want a white hearse, but we don't know what we want. And it just so happened around about that time that a friend of mine who was uh, in the funeral business in uh, Bendigo, he said to me, oh, we've just had an acquisition in our, our particular company and we've got, a, um, we've got a spare hearse that we need to uh, get rid of. It's only two years old. It's only done 30,000 kilometres. Uh, he said, do you know anyone that might be interested in buying it? And I said, oh, I just think I do that the colour was sky iridescent blue. <laughs> and so that was something, yeah, that, that looks a pretty trendy colour. <laughs> we purchased it, I picked it up, and we were having the board meeting the next week. And so it was being held out at one of our director's homes in Templestow. Uh, you know, quite a, a flash-looking home with a big drive. And so I pulled up at the front door in this hearse. <laughs> the wife came out, she nearly freaked out. <laughs> I said, Mrs Brabham, you've probably never had a hearse pull up at your front door before. She said, no, I haven't, but it looks not too bad. <laughs> and offered to take her for a ride, but she didn't want to. <laughs> Around about that time, I had a ring from the, uh, the uh, managing director of John Ellison Monkhouse Funerals. He said he'd heard about us starting uh, a, a funeral business and uh, he looked a bit into the organisation, he knew what we were about. We told him that you haven't but we're having trouble getting our mortuary going and he said don't worry about that, he said until that happens he said you can come down and use our mortuary at uh, Mulgrave uh, there down near Springvale and so here we had a competitor that was willing to open their mortuary to us at virtually no charge for us so to be able to get going in order to run a business in competition to him, <laughs> if he can work that out. And uh, he was very gracious in doing that. And we've probably been able to do it to another funeral director who now is in a sense our competition but we have an association with and he uses our mortuary and that there. And uh, though this time it's a little different, we charge him. <laughs> we just saw all of those things to go, come together to get us off the ground. And, um, well, they say a baby's got to learn to crawl before it can walk. Well, that was our, our, a good start. It was low cost, and yet we made money after 12 months, which is, I've explained, that in itself was really a miracle. We realised that our staff were getting run into the ground, running from Blackburn to Ringwood to the mortuary, uh, and the vehicles were knocking up big miles and to be honest we had a number of people who really were very tired. So we'd done a lot of praying and, and thinking about this and uh, as you can imagine uh, we're a bit of a trio here. Our friend Trevor happened to be looking on the web one day and he saw uh, an ad for a building in Mitcham. Uh, Trevor got on to one of our other directors Gordon Griffiths and Gordon raced out there to have a look at this place and rang me up very excited and said, man, you've got to come and have a look at this building. And I said, Gordon, why do you sound like you're really excited? He said, excited? He said, you've got to come and see it. So <laughs> I very quickly called a group of people together and we went out to see this building. Well, I think to a man, we walked into the place and we looked up and our jaws went, and there was this magnificent glass ceiling. 
And we immediately said, what a magnificent roof for a, for a chapel. And if you've been to Bethel today, you'll know that that's become reality. A funeral business, believe it or not, is one of the toughest businesses to get a registration on. You've got to deal with a number of government departments, councils, water supply, health department, you name it. It is a monster of a job. And uh, when we had a look at this, this building and we all decided this, this is what we wanted, um, we couldn't actually get the owner to sign a contract subject to a building permit or a planning permit and all the other permits we had to get. He wasn't prepared to take that on. And in fact, he insisted on leaving the for sale sign up at the front of the building and he insisted on leaving the ad on the web. So here we were furiously working to get, get it all to come together, knowing that at any time the owner could say, sorry guys, you're not quick enough, I've sold it, I've leased it or whatever, because he was open to either sale or lease. Um, anyway, one of the things that was a real problem to us is that we uh, had to have this one-stop shop, as David mentioned, and so we wanted the mortuary in the building. But when we went to do this, we realised that there were some major plumbing problems, very costly plumbing problems. But the plumber that was with us, who happened to be a Christian guy, he's looking at the floor and he noticed there's a bit of a line in the, in the concrete. So he had a hammer with him and he just whacked this line and a bit of the concrete bloke broke away and he said good grief what's that then he gave it another whack a decent whack and a lot more concrete broke away not only that the next thing we had water going everywhere <laughs> <laughs> and we're racing for the water meter turn that meter off <laughs> he had struck not only a cold water pipe but directly underneath it was a hot water pipe. And that saved us a bomb of money to have that in that, in that particular point. And if you ever went to the mortuary, you'd know what I mean. So that was just one little thing. And I don't want to go on too long here except to say that it was a real battle to get those other permits. It was just amazing how difficult it was. But God graciously, wonderfully, overruled and we did eventually get all the permits and not only that we got the guy to sign the contract and the day he signed that contract I can tell you we were we were jumping up and down <laughs> because that building in that six months could have been leased at any time as I said before and we wouldn't have it I really believe when any time you go to Bethel there say a little prayer to our heavenly father and thank him for what he did in giving us that particular building, because it's been a, a marvellous asset to the business. It's been a, uh, just a wonderful um, encouragement to my own personal faith as we've seen uh, God take us through some very uh, interesting times, some very difficult times, and uh, times when uh, we really haven't uh, known how we might survive uh, some of the situations. Well, the other thing that really came along like an express train was a letter in, I think it was 2002, from the tax department telling us that we were not a not-for-profit business and that we were going to be taxed way back quite some years. And we faced a very significant tax bill. Well, as we sat around and considered this and then we talked to our, our solicitors, Moores, um, they were very confident that we had a very strong case and that they would simply overcome this by writing a letter to the tax department, which they did. The only thing was the tax department didn't accept it. And then they sent us another letter, a stronger letter, and the whole process started. And eventually, the tax department weren't even prepared to talk to us. They were obviously determined to take us to court. So we ended up in the, in the AAT, uh, if you know anything about the legal system, you'll know that uh, this is the lowest level, if you like, of the courts. And to our pleasant surprise, we won on every count. But that didn't please the tax department at all. And they decided that they were going to take us to the federal court. So we ended up with, at the federal court with a single judge. And by the grace of God, 
we won that as well. In fact, it was a very clear win. The, the judge gave a very clear and definite statement. That didn't impress the tax department at all. The only trouble is the tax department have got pockets that go right down very, very deep. And we only had very shallow pockets. So we had to decide, did we pursue, c continue on? And I can tell you that the directors had some pretty heavy meetings on this subject. There was a feeling that maybe we should shut up and pay up. But then there was a strong feeling by most of us and then eventually all of us that we should trust the Lord to take us on. So we went to the federal court, full bench, three judges, and we won again unanimously. So we thought, Phew, we're there, it's all over, we're right. We don't have to pay that huge tax bill, but we did have to pay some very substantial legal bills. And then we got another letter. The tax office had appealed again and they were going to take us to the High Court of Australia. You can't go any higher. And so we ended up in front of five judges. Five judges. And all but one of those judges declared that we were in the clear. We were a not-for-profit company. We should not pay tax, etc., etc. And I think you all know the rest. But that was an incredibly challenging time for all of us. But at the same time, it gave us a a tremendous feeling of comfort to know that our Heavenly Father would look after little David as we battled Goliath, the tax department. There are many aspects that have gone on from there. God has continued to provide wonderful staff. We've been able to now see the work uh, uh, with an office down there at Mornington. And again, we saw God provide in a special way up in Queensland as we desired to get started up there. One of the things in our first philosophy statement that we said was that we would long to see a counselling program available to those who are grieving. And that has been uh, now started with a relationship with Crossway Baptist Church. And again, uh, just to see that coming together and people being blessed and helped has been a, a great joy to us who have watched it step by step coming together. I see the hand of God in that, that it's more than just us doing uh, our own physical stuff. We're doing it in the power of God's spirit and being guided and directed by him. And, and it, it is just a blessing to the people. And that was our vision, <clears throat> twofold vision, to raise money for mission, Wycliffe in particular, but Caleb and, and other organisations benefit too, and to see grieving people being looked after, loved, cared for, as uh, Trevor mentioned. I want to see it continue uh, with, the, with the same philosophy, uh, which is, you know, um, peace and love and, and hope, and that's what we're, we're seeking to, uh, to give to the people. But, um, and, and that we stay on track and that we don't lose focus of what we're about, but at the same time be bold enough to step out into, into something further, and, uh, and that we seek to continue to do things that are there for, for ministry, that are there for mission, and there to make money so that all these things can, you know, ministry and mission then can be fulfilled in a greater way. The board that was set up for uh, Bethel uh, really had this as a focus, that uh, the staff would uh, really enter into the vision of uh, not only the ministry that they were daily involved in, but rather the, the greater uh, expanse of Wycliffe and Bible translation and getting the word out to people. Uh, so I would say yes, right from the very beginning, uh, this was our heartbeat that they would uh, join in the missionary venture and let that be part of the goal. We recognised, uh, for instance, that the funeral business is very different from any other kind of business and the kind of commitment, uh, the hours and uh, the emotional overload that uh, can be experienced in ministering to people like that is really great. And uh, so to have the ultimate goal of saying we're part of a bigger picture which is taking the word of God not only here but out to the ends of the earth, uh, we wanted that to be part of it and I believe we've seen that. and. Uh, we're excited to see their response uh, and we long to see that continue on as we grow and, and expand.
Our prayer is that we will never lose the original vision, the original philosophy statement we came up with. Uh, to us is the nub of Bethel, uh, the uniqueness of Bethel. And we want more than anything that people will remember our history, our reason for being what we are, why we do what we do, our uniqueness, and that they'll want to keep it going and that we'll never lose that uh, desire to be um, serving God in, in this way, to raise money for mission and to reach out to grieving people. And we want that philosophy to keep going, um, never be dissipated.